Hey everybody, I'm Zill Blitz and welcome to another episode of Euro Truck Simulator 2. Now in our last episode, we tried to park a tandem trailer that seemed to entertain a good number of you. So, and we failed, of course. Well, not of course, right? Let's not give up hope here. However, in this episode, we're back. Another tandem trailer. There it is, filled with brake pads. We're taking it from where we are right now, which I kind of have forgotten where we are right now, actually. Bilbao? Near Bilbao, maybe. Um, and we're going to be taken all along the northern coast of Spain, and we're going down to Co Coruna, and we're going to try to park these tandem brake pad filled trailers again. So we are not giving up, and we're going to do this this time. Now, hopefully, we can get out of the parking lot. Every time I do this, FM Llama says he's mostly entertained by the struggles I have getting out of the parking lot. So. I feel like I need to do a little bit better job getting out of the parking lot here. And we're off to a good start. So we'll go past this odd um, statue here. Wow, we have such a... I have to remember how to drive these tandem trailers here. This is long. We really need to keep our turns wide there. Hopefully we make it. So far, so good. All right. So we are underway. This is an eight-hour journey. I've got to fix the calibration on the wheel again because it's pulling to the right but we'll sort that out um, once we get going here that truck took a nice wide turn we are on our way here hopefully we get enough power and hopefully once we get on the high wheel we'll be able to make it without racking this up now i haven't driven for about six or seven days so i'm hopeful that we do okay here so far so good this is harder when you don't when you don't play for a while and then you come in and you throw tandem trailers on. I'm finding that I'm <laughs> we have to pay attention here. So anyway, we're underway. I'm going to fix the calibration. We'll see you once we get out on the road about an hour or so. It's early in the morning now, and I think we got enough to go like four hours before we need to sleep. So hoping for a good journey. And we've got some tips from people about how to park tandem trailers. So we're going to try to put those into practice at the end. We're going to try to hopefully get I can do anything. And maybe this will be the day where we finally can do anything. What do you think? We'll see you in a little bit. What? 1400 speeding violation. Wow, that, that was expensive. It's a pricey start here. We're only making 40,000 for this eight hours worth of work. That's okay. So not the best start here in terms of money, but I didn't even see I, I just checked the speed limit too and I thought I'm doing fine but they must have slowed down there for the the off ramp and I didn't see that so okay a little bit of a price to pay to start out but other than that we're doing okay see you in a little bit all righty we're a little bit over an hour in our drive about six hours and 50 minutes left to go and we've got a nice straight stretch of the highway got the cruise control on this should be a pretty good chance to to chat looks like we've got about half because one of our goals we were working towards just as kind of a reminder is that we want to get 1.6 million so we can do our AI driver test. That should be coming up soon. And we have 760,000 euros right now. So we're approaching the halfway mark in that quest to however much we need. It might be a little bit less than 1.6 million. So maybe we're actually closer to halfway, but I'm kind of looking forward to that. I've got to kind of, kind of think of some models that we want to test, but look back through some of the older comments on some of the videos about different types of AI driving development patterns like even or this truck's looking like it's making me a little bit nervous here. Um, even or maybe ADP or long distance. We're going to try five different drivers and see which one of them makes us makes us the most money, all using the same trucks in the same big city. It's kind of cool. I've, I've never noticed graffiti before, except down in the Siberia um, DLC. I'm kind of surprised they have it, but it's cool that it's there pretty fun. Um, the other thing I wanted to chat about, so I mentioned, I chatted a little bit in the last episode about the AI driving routines, and that seemed to strike a nerve. A number of people posting saying they seem to think that the, something's a little bit off with the AI drivers, especially in your truck simulator, since either the last update or the one before that. And um, I was looking at a few of them here. Joseph Flu said, I thought it was just me, but I've noticed the AI and ETS more than ATS operating really weirdly. Like yesterday, I had five instances, I gotta pay attention here to driving, five instances of a truck merging onto the highway after an on-ramp and the car in front of me totally stopped, far left lane. 
And that's what I've noticed. It seems like merging, like you see cars in a lane where they shouldn't stop, they just stop and then they merge. So it feels like something's a little bit off with the merging on on ramps and stuff like that. And that's the one, if you saw the last episode about 18 minutes in, I think it was, where I, I think was the closest closest near miss to an accident I've ever had in Euro Truck Simulator or American Truck Simulator. I still don't know how we didn't hit anything. And the main reason was there was a breakdown in the right-hand lane and a truck, a breakdown in the in the breakdown lane, with a, not breakdown, but the police had pulled someone over in the breakdown lane. And someone in the right-hand lane, a truck just basically came almost to a full stop rather than just reducing their speed. And we almost hit it because I wasn't expecting it. But now I think I've got an idea because I know it's going to happen. But a number of other people mentioning in comments there too, uh, in addition to, to Joseph, about kind of oddities with the AI routine. So hopefully those will get cleaned up in a little bit in 1.45 there. But making good time here, I feel like I've settled back in. Although when you don't drive in the game for like a week and then you come back in, it's probably not the smartest thing is to take two tandem trailers here. Logs, slow us down, I had to hit the brake. Um, but I, I'm starting to feel like we're settling in a little bit here and things are good. We've got good weather, highway driving, all these things are good. We're going to need to stop and sleep at some point in the near future. Uh, we got plenty of gas though, so we'll kind of make a little bit more time here and then uh, we'll touch base as we get uh, about halfway so halfway or uh, so through the journey here. See you in a bit. About five hours left and I am so proud of myself because we could we need to sleep in about three hours, but I actually checked the map to see if there was a good place to sleep down the road and there turns out there actually wasn't. So we're going to pull off here and try to sleep here. Now we have plenty of gas. I'm trying to find the sleeping spot. Looks like it's over here on the left somewhere. Make sure we don't hit anything. I think we just pull right into it. Now last time we tried to sleep in our truck we had some issues here. Hopefully this time we'll be okay. I think I can go right between. No, I'm going to go right beside this little tanker here. Hopefully it lets us sleep with this tandem trailer here. Now it's not again. So again, it didn't let us sleep with the tandem trailer. So I have an idea. We're going to decouple. And now we'll see if it lets us sleep. That was, there we go. Use the following to sleep. So yeah, that's another kind of thing. That's, you have to decouple here to sleep, which is weird, right? So we'll sleep all the way through the day. Now it's raining, it's eight o'clock at night, but so we get some daytime driving, we're gonna do the double sleep. Plus it'll make us a little bit more money. Not really cheating, but all right. So now we're all slept up there and let's hook this truck back up. Whoa, lightning, that's kind of cool. That was pretty impressive there. All right, so let's hook our trailer back up. Here we go. And how much money? 790,000 euros. Not so much money there. Anyway, we'll get back out on the road here and see you in a little bit. So we're a little over halfway now and the rain is stuck with us here. It's about seven o'clock in the morning, but it's still pretty dark and dreary out here. We're getting some occasional lightning. Got the windshield wipers on high and we're just cutting our way west across the northern coast of Spain here. But um, yeah, some rough weather here for us. You know, this actually kind of one of the things I was thinking about. So a while ago, I think uh, people may, if you're following the American Truck Simulator series, I put up an episode of uh, my 10 most wish for features in American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator. And people keep watching that one and adding some comments on it. And a lot of times people will put their ideas for features and things like that. And a couple of people recently have put one that this kind of weather made me think of, which is have um, seasons in the game. So you would actually, the weather would change over the course of time based on game time and stuff like that. And um, I thought that'd be kind of cool. I mean, I think that that would be really neat. Like you would have the snow mod built into the game um, and the, you know, the daylight would get longer, the days would get longer in the summertime and shorter. Than you could make it optional, of course, so that you didn't, people didn't want it, they could turn it off. But if you wanted to, you could have it and just have it kind of modify the weather and things like that. And maybe even cold and heat would kind of impact engine and truck performance as well. That'd be kind of cool too. But yeah, I thought that, that'd be a nice feature. And especially, I mean, I suppose it's one of those things. It's like, it's super easy to sit here and say, oh yeah, I wish I had seasons in the game. But if you actually kind of think about what you have to do to make that happen, it's probably really hard, right? Because if you're going to have the foliage that changes in certain areas and the days change and go 
different areas depending upon where you are. And it's it's a probably a massive graphic overhaul overhaul to get seasons and weather to work like that in the game. So it's one of those things where I feel like, yeah, it's super easy to sit here and say, oh, that'd be great. But making it happen is probably a ton of work. But the thing that I keep seeing things too about 1.45, it sounds like we got some more trailers coming up. And I know there was a, a trailer mod that just recently came up. I'll have to try to see if we can uh, pick that one up. So that'd be kind of fun. Anyway, about three hours left in our journey. Let's uh, let's connect back up in about uh, an hour and a half here. Whoa, I feel like that truck's gonna, car's gonna, aha, this time, oh, I'm trapped. Okay, not what I wanted to have happen here. Yep, and there we are, cutting along the coast, we can see the ocean to our right here. It's the first time I think we've seen the water along this route. So I, the, the city of Navia, was right on the way so i got off but now we had to kind of root through the town here we get in one of these spots where they just send like hours of traffic at us from the other spot here but finally we're back out we probably waited about three minutes for about 50 cars to go by but now we're back on it we have to you can see in the navi down below we have to kind of wind our way all the way back through the town i thought i could pull off and then just get right back on the highway turned out it's been uh, a much longer adventure, but we do now have the city of Nabia in our books. So another Iberian city for the Conquistador achievement. I think this is 20 now, so still 31 to go. Long haul. Got some tough turns here now. Hopefully we can make this out, but hour and a half to go. We're in the final approaches now to Coruña and Things have gone pretty steadily. Just been a lot of kind of highway driving. It's still raining the whole time. It's been, I feel like the skies in front of us are clear, but for whatever reason, um, it just keeps, wow, that truck's low down again. But we're on to them now. Not quite sure what that car's doing, but hopefully he goes. There we go. I think this guy's got a heavy load in front of us too. Oh, this driver's got a heavy load in front of us. Um, one thing that I was thinking about, kind of talking about that whole idea with features, because a couple of people have brought this up too, is, so first of all, caveat, right? Because whenever, when I mention this on an episode, invariably someone puts a comment down below that says you can turn this off. And I, I know that, I actually like it, um, which is the fatigue model. So I like the fatigue model turned on and I like the sleeping, but I, I do wish there were a feature to do naps because it's, it seems like it's kind of, you know, it'd be nice to be able to sleep. Also, it would be nice to be able to sleep if you have a sleeper trailer like we have to actually be able to sleep in your truck. You know, if you could just pull off, I guess you can at those truck spots, but it feels like, like in a town, you should be able to just kind of pull over and like sleep, right? Because you've got a sleeper. So maybe not so restricted to some of the, the rare spots that they have in the game, but it'd be nice to be able to designate how long, like I'd like to be able to sleep eight hours or six hours or four hours or you know 12 hours for example because right now like on, on a, our choice back there was we could sleep eight hours or 16 hours now someone said it was nine hours but i actually thought it was eight hours but anyway you get the point you know it's either eight or 16 or nine or 18 or whatever it is and so you end up kind of missing a lot of the daytime driving hours like it'd be really nice in that last one to be able to sleep 12. well i guess that worked out pretty well but you get the idea you know variable sleep times would be pretty cool for the fatigue model. A little bit of a, an added wish list feature here. But I'm starting to get excited now. I hope you're getting excited too, right? Because coming up soon, tandem parking. Now we, we might not get, I hope we can do the, the I can do anything kind of thing, right? But, and there were some tips for the parking. I know Old Lady Plays uh, iterated a point very eloquently that I think a couple of other people, oh, look, it stopped raining, nice. That's a good omen, right? Old Lady Plays uh, illustrated, um, illustrated a point that I thought is kind of what I'm going to use for an approach. And I kind of was stumbling onto this as we were, as I was kind of trying to back up this last tandem trailer, which is to use the cab and the first trailer to try to keep them as straight as possible to push the second trailer in the direction we want to go. So literally you're thinking almost of like the cab and the first trailer as an extended cab and you're just trying to back in that second trailer. And then if you can get that, then you can adjust and get the first trailer in once you get the second trailer into the right spot. So that's the thinking I've got right now. Of course, none of this is worked. 
and it's easier said than done. A couple of people have posted advice saying, well, if you you know use an external camera, you can back up. But again, one of the house rules in this save is whenever the truck's moving, I use first person view like this to try to make it as realistic as realistic as possible, because I do think it would be easier to back up a tandem trailer using external views. I'm, I'm pretty I totally think that that makes sense. It's still not easy, probably, but I'm going to cut this car off. There we go. Um, it would be easier to do it using external views because you can just see things. Now, I do allow myself to stop the truck and then use external views, kind of like you would a walk around or something like that. The other point I was thinking, too, is that and I wondered there was an actual actual truck driver that posted this on, on an episode quite a while ago, actually, um, just about the idea of you could use drones in real life. And I wondered, do truckers actually use drones to assist their parking? in real life. I know there's the one YouTube channel where the guy has parking lessons and he does with a lot of drones. He's got like six cameras active. Which way are we going here? I don't know which way we're going. I think it's this way. Maybe? Please? Get it right? Oh, whew, guessed it. That was totally impossible to figure out based on that newbie. But anyway, we're here. Um, yeah, so there, you know, there's the YouTube stage channel that has parking lessons for trucks that actually I was walking when I, watching when I was first playing that is so good about parking tutorials. I learned so much from it. Um, and he uses drones to get up above and stuff like that. But then there was a trucker that posted a while ago, a little while ago, and I, I asked him the question, but I'm not sure if he actually saw my, my reply to his comment because the question was, do real truckers, do a lot of real truckers now use drones to assist them with parking because is it you know in some places is it really so complicated that it would benefit to having a drone in your truck that you could put up above and kind of watch as you're in the truck i would think not right but anyway things i wonder it's always cool when real truckers post here and offer their thoughts up and then there was uh, someone posted just recently about how i think it was on that feature episode about how different like all the weight regulations and axle regulations are in real life compared to in the game and it's just insane it's so much more complicated it's like wow i'm glad i'm not doing this in real life all right where are we gonna get it now i can park any i can do anything i can do anything yes i can right there again really <sighs> well it's not as hard as the last one but it's certainly not easy, right? Because we gotta, we got, why, like, that's really hard. But we're gonna give it a shot here. And we got some cars behind us here that are a little bit upset that we're holding up. The, whoops, <laughs> sorry, everybody. Yeah, we'll get busy here. Okay, so we have a plan. I don't know what it is, but we have a plan. Our plan is to do a U turn to face out the way we came in. Then we're gonna back right up, try to drive in the rear trailer get totally frustrated after about a half an hour and then quit and just take the default parking. That's our plan. And I'm filled with confidence. I don't even think that's going to fit in there. Really. I mean, I can do anything is one thing, but then they give us these incredibly challenging ones. Challenge accepted. All right. So our plan is to use... Let's go the wrong way. All right. Let's back up. Okay, that, that's not going to work, is it? We have to go forward. Okay, let's not be dumb here. Straight enough. All right, here we go. All right, so we kind of screwed this up, but I know what we did wrong. We can fix this. I don't know why I'm leaning. Oh, look at that. Kind of cool, because I got it in, but I didn't wasn't able to push it in. That's actually the best I've ever done. I mean, it's still a total fail, but it's the best I've ever done. I 
think I have to do it more gradually. All right, let's try again. Okay, that feels about right. Ah, I think I have to be closer to this near trailer, right? So this trailer on that side, the red trailer on that side, I can't take a sharp angle. I have to be more gradual. This is somewhat improved. It's, it's, it's getting that first one gradual so that you can straighten the second one. That's going to be really tricky. Let's try one more time. So like this maybe, huh? Let's give this a try. I can watch the shadows on the trailers to get it straight. So I think I have to be right near, oh, I gotta go more gradual. Like that. That, there we are. Ah, no, 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 ah, darn it. Okay, that, that's fixable though. No, 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 that way. Ah. Dummy. Nope, nope. Okay. Hmm. It's not bad. I feel like if I adjust forward, I might be able to tuck it in there, right? So it, it doesn't need to be totally undone. I just need to come forward to be able to push it in a little bit more. I think we can push that in. See, now that's all the way in, right? So now can we, it's gonna be really hard to straighten it out with that trailer in the way. But gosh, we're so close. Well, I mean, not really, but. <laughs> kind of adjusted that trailer a little bit to suit our purposes. I don't, gosh, okay, we're not giving up now because we're so close, right? <laughs> Could we? Dare we dream? <sighs> J. 
Check it out. Can we just pull forward and is it going to give it to us? Look at that, we're so close. Maybe. <sighs> I can do anything. Boom chakalaka! Wow, this is like the best day of my life. Screenshot. We gotta take a picture. Oh, tandem parking. We are in. Oh my goodness. That took like a half an hour, so it's not super impressive. But I learned a ton. That is pretty cool i gotta get a screenshot with the things in there there we go oh my goodness we did it ha huh. so that worked with trying to think of the cab and the trailer as one unit and then what i realized i had to do too is that i have to be adjusting the parking as i'm pulling forward so it's not just a back in it's a back in, pull forward, tweak, tweak, tweak. So it's kind of you're using both directions to adjust the trailers and things like that. I think next time I might be able to do it faster. I'll have to see how much time it was when I put this in here. But I'm guessing probably took about 30 minutes. But I can do anything. First time ever. Tandem trailer parking. Yes. Happy days. Took an hour and 15 minutes. And I guess probably 45 minutes of that was driving. Anyway... Moving our ways up towards level 32, 21 cities out of 51 for Conquistador, and we're done for today. We'll see you back. I think uh, people did mention they kind of like that idea of doing a long drive, as long as possible for episode 100. So three more episodes to go. We'll be there. I'll put a link to our next episode as soon as it's ready up here. Thanks so much for tuning in. And yeah, first time ever, we can do anything. What a big day. Take care, everybody. See ya.